let the peace, love, and blessing of the Almighty God be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. The power of the spoken word. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may render grace unto the hearers. Second lesson, Colossians chapter 4 verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Golden text, James chapter 3 verse 2. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Beware of what you speak. Quote. The text from the indices for the identification of a child of God. In the world, a person who gives you some money, no matter what he does to you, not even if he curses or disgraces you, would still be regarded as a very good man. Does it mean that once a person gives you money, that automatically makes him a man of God? Are these the things that identify a person as a man of God? True Paul, did Christ not say that even if a man should sell all that he has, distribute the proceeds to the poor, or even offer himself to be burnt, would gain nothing without having Love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. What is responsible for the downfall and destruction of the whole world? It is evil communication. What the world refers to as juju, apparition, witchcraft, death, or ghost is none other than evil communication. All these superstitious beliefs and fetishism are founded on evil word. Who is the creator of these evil things? It is the evil man himself. When God made the first day, he blessed it. He also blessed the second third and up to the seventh day, he equally declared to the world and to the fullness thereof as good and perfect. The question is, where do, e where do the evil things come from? This explains the reason why we are enjoined not to allow evil communication to proceed out of our mouths. If everyone should, from now, cease to speak evil, evil will also cease to exist. The real meaning of Satan explained. The sower of the good seed in the vineyard did a good work by planting a good seed. But at night, the evil one, an enemy, went into the field and planted bad seeds along with the good ones. The bad seeds here represent evil communications. The real meaning of Satan is evil communication or vain words which does not give glory to God. Our greatest salvation is to avoid vain words to proceed out of our mouths. If we abide by the word of God, 
which we hear daily in the form of gospels, testimonies, songs, visions, dreams, and prophecies, we would be saved. If we hearken to God's injunction that come in these forms, then the evil root shall have been sealed. If we speak only edifying words, then evil will cease to have a place in the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear when he said that you have been made holy by the words he gives to you. What changes a man? What prospers a person? What gives a person good health, peace, love, happiness and joy? It is the word of God. Edifying words. A local adage has it that good words prevent quarrels, whereas evil and provocative words fuel animosity. If you observe closely, the source of all problems in the world is traceable to evil words. When you hear of sowing a bad seed, it is nothing other than vain words. Satan himself is none other thing than evil communication. The bad seeds sown by the enemy are the evil words, abuses and curses which ultimately are responsible for the sickness, starvation, poverty, war, mishaps and deaths. It is responsible for all the problems in the world. The genesis of human problem. Jacob had 12 sons and Reuben is first born. Others include Levi, Simeon, Judah and the last born Benjamin. When he was about to die, he invited all of them for blessing. When they had assembled, he called Reuben and emphasized his position as firstborn and then cursed him for defiling his father's bed. He stated clearly that even if all the wealth in the world were given to him, he would not prosper. That curse explains the source of poverty in the world today, which indicates the fact that this group of people come from the stock of Reuben. If Jacob were to come round and see the manifestation of his spoken words, he would not fail to weep. Consequently, if Reuben were to be present to know the root cause of his penury, he would vow never to touch a woman, even if such a woman were to be offered to him free. If he had not defiled his father's bed, he would not have been under a curse. That is why it is said that a wise man sees an evil afar off and takes precautions, but a foolish man waits for the evil to overcome him. It is also said, a child that walks circumspectly will kill that which killed his father, but a child who is careless would be killed by the same thing that killed his father. Is the world today not mature enough to know itself and walk circumspectly? Jacob did not stop his curse on Reuben. He extended it to Levi and Simeon. These two sons of his, he cursed that the sword shall not depart from them for the part they played in the destruction of both human and material resources. He vowed that 
his soul could have nothing to do with them. That is why no matter what good thing you would do to a person of the likes of Levi and Simeon, they would end up chopping off your head. This is the fulfillment of the curse upon them. The descendants of Levi and Simeon thus produce warriors, violent and heartless murderers. The twelve stars signify the twelve tribes of Israel, which also give the source of the twelve months of the year and the twelve zodiac signs. Therefore, any person who is born in the same month in which Levi and Simeon were born will be violent, destructive, and murderers depicting the stock they rightly come from. When Jacob was on his way home, he tarried in a certain city with Levi, Simeon, and their sister. Incidentally, the son of the king of that city happened to meet Jacob's daughter and they fell in love. The prince slept with her and she conceived and gave birth to a baby boy. When investigations were fully proved that it was the king's son that was responsible for the pregnancy, the king apologized and promised to do whatever he was asked to do in order to marry the daughter of Jacob to his son. Jacob gave the king the condition of being circumcised with his household. Circumcision was at that time a mark of the children of God, the descendants of Abraham, according to God's promise to him. Circumcision was to the Israelites what baptism is to Christians today. Both Jacob and the king's families were assembled to settle the matter. But Levi and Simeon, whose sister was involved in the incident, were not happy with the affair in the first place and therefore did not accept the settlement. Under normal circumstances, Levi and Simeon were not expected to make any contribution towards the settlement. Therefore, their opinions were not necessary and were not sought for. Although the case was amicably settled, these two brothers were still dissatisfied. Their father, who would have been considered to have the last say in the matter, was brushed aside only for the two sons to take the law into their hands. Thus, they went ahead and destroyed the indigences of the place and their properties. This singular act of his sons caused Jacob to escape for his dear life. It was because of this that when it was time to bless his son, Jacob cursed Levi and Simeon that the sword shall never depart from them. He also vowed that his soul would have nothing to do with them. This also separated them from Jacob. You would now realize that if the murderers of today were to, aware, were to be aware of this historical background, they would, they would refrain from such acts. Unfortunately, the whole world is taking delight in killing. God distances himself from all murderers, even though some of these people go to church claiming to enjoy God's protection and guidance. They are merely 
making false claims. It is said that come what may, no sinner will ever be saved. Whoever kills another person shall be killed. Whoever commits adultery and fornication shall not go unpunished. The lesson, however, that you should hold fast to is that you should not allow evil communication to proceed out of your mouth. Whenever the word of God falls to the ground, it breaks mighty rocks and rises up to accomplish the intended purpose. The whole world is replete with sins as individuals and groups continue to wallow in abominable acts. The stock in trade of the inhabitants of the world is to curse, to maim, and to kill. The husband would curse the wife, and the wife would also curse the husband. The parents curse their children, and vice versa. That, it, that is what has kept the world in the position it finds itself. All these go to prove that the source of evil to the world is evil words. If I should enumerate all the areas of your affliction, you would realize that your problems are from evil communication. The source of African blacks suffering. Now, if Isaac were to know the efficacy of the word, he would have been quite objective that he was not misdirecting his love. Isaac called Esau his beloved son and asked him to prepare him some food with fresh meat. The mother, Rebecca, when she heard this, immediately directed Jacob to bring a ram. The ram was slaughtered, and Rebecca used the meat to prepare a delicious meal for Isaac. When he asked his mother how he would go about the differences in his voice and skin, she told him not to bother. Jacob had a deep voice, and in order to deceive his father, his mother advised him to inform his father that he, Jacob, who came to be Esau, lost his voice while he was returning from the bush in search of animal. Esau was naturally hairy and to successfully deceive the old man, Rebecca covered Jacob's arms with the skin of the ram to impersonate Esau. While Esau was still in the bush hunting, Rebecca had prepared the food which Jacob served his father Isaac. On presentation of the food, Isaac observed that the voice he was hearing resembled that of Jacob. When he felt Jacob's body coupled with the excuse he gave as regards his voice, Isaac was convinced that it was Esau kneeling before him, and so he blessed him. Immediately, Isaac had finished showering blessings upon blessings on Jacob. Esau appeared 
and went to his father to inform him of his return from the hunting. Isaac was most disturbed when he realized that he had been tricked because he was blind. When Esau insisted that Isaac should bless him, Isaac said that he had no blessing left. In our present age, unlike Isaac, the blessing of our father is inexhaustible. If Isaac were to come around to see the consequences of his action and the black people, their predicament today, he would have wept. The source of the suffering of Africans is traceable to the statement which says that the elder shall serve the younger. Out of anger for being tricked, Esau decided to kill Jacob. But because Rebekah loved Jacob more than Esau, she advised him to escape to another land. On the other hand, Isaac, their father, loved Esau more than Jacob because Esau had been taken very good care of him. Why the whites are blessed? The whites are so abundantly blessed that they prosper a great deal. That they prosper a great deal because of Isaac's blessing upon Jacob. Nevertheless, Esau's predicament could not entirely be blamed on Isaac. In fact, a great, to a greater extent, Esau is to blame for the whole situation. One day, when Esau came back from hunting, he was so hungry that he went and asked Jacob for food. On his part, Jacob told him to decide between food and his birthright. Esau, being so hungry, decided to sell his birthright in exchange for the food. This can prove to you the efficacy of word. It also confirms the nomination in the Bible that through the words of your mouth you will be justified or condemned. Isa, therefore, was responsible for his predicament. So each one of you is responsible for your misfortune and predicament. Isa did not think of the slightest implication of his verbal transfer of birthright to his younger brother. He thought after the meal, everything would end there. Little did he know that it was stamped and sealed and finally came to pass as he had spoken. God remembered Esau, the blacks. The word is God right from the beginning. The word had been with God. Everything that exists is a manifestation of the word. Whether it is death or life, prosperity or luck, peace or war, good health or sickness, good or evil, and even man, are all the manifestation of the spoken word. It is for this reason that you are enjoined not to allow evil communication to proceed out of your mouth, but that you should utter only words that are edifying. When all else had failed, the world, the word was still there on the lips of Isaac. For him to speak. In spite of the disappointment, 
Isaac finally prayed to God to remember Esau in the scheme of things. That word alone, remember, is what has restored Esau to his rightful place today. This also confirms the scriptural nomination that Ethiopia shall rise. The goodness and prosperity enjoyed by the whites are the birthright of the blacks. They are cheated. Whatever advantages the whites have belongs to the blacks. All the human and material resources abroad in America and in Europe came from and belong to the black race. The Africans have really been exploited and cheated by the whites. Africa is so richly blessed. Fortunately for the blacks, it was only their birthright that was sold and not their land. Since Isaac had prayed God to remember Esau, the manifestation of that plea is taking place right now in Africa. Civilization is said to have originated from Africa in Egypt. During the Second World War, there was acute scarcity of salt. One of the reasons for the scarcity was because Egypt, the chief producer of the commodity, then rescinded his conflict, his conflict with the foreign firm that undertook to produce it. All the good things you can think of, such as gold, oil, and the rest of the minerals, both materials and human resources are derived from Africa. The wealth that abounds in Africa is inexhaustible. The whites will surely bow for the blacks in this world. The coming of the Holy Spirit. The former USSR outlawed Christian religion, calling it a religion for the lazy. In 1917, the Russian government dealt a devastating blow to Christianity in the region and put it to rest. That same year, three nuns revealed the dissension of the Holy Spirit in Africa. The whites started from that time to search for the Holy Spirit for the purpose of discovering or locating him. God has done that in remembrance of Isaac's prayer that he should remember Esau representing the blacks. These things are happening now because this is the close of the age. All these things further confirm the efficacy of the spoken word. You are the architect of your own fate. A local adage has it that the death of the monkey is caused by its own mouth. Nobody is mindful of the spoken words. Instead, many people are after physical features such as the land, the eyes, the legs, head and other parts of the body. All these parts of the body are not as important as the spoken word with positive or negative effect. The sun, the sky, mountains and valleys, human beings, Fishes in the water, birds in the air, trees and animals in the forest are all the manifestation of the spoken word. God declared, let there be light, which is day, let there be night, darkness, 
Let there be air and all the things that were created and they all come into existence. The Word is the Father and the Creator of everything. Instead of man to worship the Creator, he has gone astray to worship what is created. This explains why Job refused to blaspheme against God even when he was badly afflicted and his wife asked him to denounce God. He said that instead of blaspheming against his God, he would rather curse the month he was conceived and the day he was born. He said so because he considered himself to originate from the stock of Reuben, born on the 1st of April. Levi and Simeon were born in May and June respectively. That is the system that astrologers use in foretelling events. Therefore, the words you toy with could be destructive or constructive. With the word, everything is possible. Initially, God created everything in the world except man. Man came into being through the spoken word. It was pronounced, let us make man in our own image. Zachariah's wife was barren. An angel Gabriel came to him and told him that his wife would bring forth a male child and his name will be John. Those words came to pass and Elizabeth delivered a baby boy. If the words had said she would bring forth a baby girl, the same would have been taken effect. The source of our problem. Our problem is that your problem is that you do not know what the word is and therefore do not listen to it and take it seriously. The word is spirit. It is life. It is God and it is power. Everything that you see was through the word and what is yet to come into existence shall be through the word. Many do not worry about the effects of the word, yet they claim to worship God. Is God not the word? If you fail to honor the word, would you honor God? This explains why you are enjoined not to allow evil communication to proceed out of your mouth. From now, henceforth, you should only speak edifying words. Speak only the words that will bring peace, prosperity, love, and all the good things. You are very careless and reckless with what you speak. Every prophecy foretold by angel Gabriel about John the Baptist all came to pass one after the other. Also, everything that was spoken about Christ was equally fulfilled accordingly. After God had created man, he commanded him to go into the world and multiply and replenish the earth. These words have now come to pass so much that countries are now applying various family planning methods to check their population. Read the first lesson once again. First lesson, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. 
the word the creator of all to reveal to you how foolish the world is human beings have failed to note the fact that in the beginning was the word and that the word was with god and the same word was god man therefore is an embodiment of the word <laughs>